Welcome to Brojo Builds. Now in part one, we we're working on the throat and the and the bowl area of the intake port. Now we're gonna be working on the exhaust port. Again, this isn't a step by step, but a a guide on what you should how the port should look like after you're done. What is the shape you're looking for and how it should be cut. Um, again, not a step by step, but more or less a guide that in which you could follow. And um, if you see the, the part one, you can see that the ports came out, you know, the pocket area came out pretty good. And again, we're just looking to do a rough cut in the first shot. So we want to rough cut all the ports and then we could go back later on and finish with uh, either a roll or a stone, uh, depending on your the 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 surface that you're looking to get go for. Again, an in, an intake port, you want to keep it fairly rough, no more than 80. And as all side, you polish it out if you if that's what you want to go for. Again, this is going to be more of a street head and a very streetable combination. So um, this is I'm not going super crazy here. Um, just a reminder, if you can see that the, the valve seats are cut, the throats are cut for a larger valve for this head. I had my machine shop cut the throat open for a 22160 valve pack package. So you can actually see uh, the material that i am be working on taking down and, and smoothing out in this process. So without further ado, I'm going to put the camera to the side and I want to see how good of a video I could get with it and I'm just going to do the rough cut on this first port for you guys to see and we'll come back and and I'll show you uh, what we did here again if you could uh, let's see if I scoot the camera up forward a little bit and see if we could get a good look in there so you guys could pause it and see how it looks and see what the comparison will how it will look like uh, again you could pause it and then we'll come back and we'll see how it looks all right so there's a few spots there that you could pause and you guys could go back.
good thing to do is you get your bits you know you get your carbides and run it with your hand and imagine if you're running with the air tool with the air grinder and make sure that you know as you're moving the tool around that you can see how close you're gonna be to the seat and where you should not touch and where you can touch again um, when as you're porting the seats, you do not ever want to touch a seat, especially with a carbide, you could ruin the seat and once you hit a seat, you could pretty much, you, you could scrap ahead. Um, the, the valves aren't going to seal no matter how you lap them. Again, the valve job hasn't been done on this uh, head yet, but I still not wanna, don't want to touch the seat because you could ruin a seat with a carbide. So it's good to just do a dry run and, you know, see where you're going to run the tool, maybe like me right now I'm trying to decide which tool I'm going to use right now to run and trim the guide down so um, I think I'll start off with this one and then I'll finish off with this guy again let me see make sure if I got that in the camera I'll start off with this guy and end with this guy and I'm sorry if it's a little blurry
All right. So as you see there, you just kind of see the difference from before and after. You can start and stop, you know, the video, and uh, you can pause it, and you can see the difference between before and after. I want to see if I can do some stop clips and and post them as well. Um, let me see if we could add a different angle. You can see that this transition is now smoothing, smoother, and uh, you can see where the guide is. Let me see. If I could. It's uh, been narrowed. A, a point to to make out when we look at ports it's in, in itself they're laid in an angle right the exhaust port the valve is here the port is here so there's a there's a there's an angle in which it comes down same thing with the intake valve there's an angle and you want to travel the path of least resistance that's how air likes to travel you don't want to make air do a lot of big changes and move around real crazy. Now, what I did here took a little over 10 minutes to rough cut. And I'm going to finish the exhaust valves, uh, the, the exhaust on this head. And we do a, comp uh, a compare shot at the end of the video of just the, the, the bowl work on one head versus none on another. And you'll see the major difference between the two. Um, this is where most of your flow is going to be pick, picked up. It's not about making a big port. It's more about making a good flowing port. A port that transitions very well. And uh, I think that's what we're doing here. And especially, again, this is going to be in a mild application. But everything counts. Now, a, a nice head here. And, and, and a small cam tied together, I could build a motor in which it's very streetable, but might as well make close to, or if not over 400 horsepower with a cam that only has uh, fit, uh, 218 at 50, which, you know, and, and when it comes to cam terms, it's kind of in the small side. So again, I'm, this engine, I'm not looking to dyno, but we'll, we will eventually take the car to the track and the numbers won't lie, you know. Uh, I believe a simple, you know, pocket port like what I'm doing here, and a nice little combination like I'm putting together will be make a nice streetable motor, and the car should easily run 12s on on motor. And again, this is something that you could do to your head on your own time. And like I said, the exhaust port is going to take you about 10 to 15 minutes each. The intake port is going to take a little bit longer, but this is the part that actually takes the most time. Uh, you do this, and then when we show you the, the chambers, the chambers are going to take you, you know, a good 15 minutes each as well. And so this is not something that you're going to be able to do in just two hours. Take heads off of your car and pour them and then slap them back on. No, this is something that should be done with time. Maybe uh, during the week, put two hours a day uh, on it. And like, again, one day, finish all the exhaust ports, you know, like rough cutting, and then rough cut the intake, and then and go on and so forth, you know? Uh, try not to rush this process. Again, take your time, and let the carbide do its job. And when you're done, you'll have really, really good results. Uh, again, well, at the end of this video, we'll lay the head up and you'll be able to see just in the port, uh, in the pockets, the night and day difference between this head and its brother, which doesn't have any work done to it. And um, again, and then after that, I'm going to have to finish that other head to go along with this one. Okay, quick recap on everything on this head when it comes to the the porting the pockets if you again both of these heads have been opened for a 202 160 valve so if you can see here 
there's a, a transition, right, that will go onto the seat. So over here, we smooth that transition out, right? You want you want to smooth the transition out on both intake and exhaust, so that it's as a smooth path for the air to travel, whether it's coming into the engine or outgoing to the engine. You want it to be as smooth as possible, as straight line and. And that's what actually causes, brings the flow. Not the actual bigger port itself. Opening the port without, on the head, without working and unshrouding the valve itself in, in the pocket area is a complete waste. You are wasting your time. If you're going to do anything with porting, and it's, this goes not only with Vortec heads, it goes with heads in general. The area where you should put your most work in is right here. In the bowl area so again we we un, we open it up we, we we straightened the path and again with the camera and the angles we can't really show uh, how I opened it up inside the port itself um, hopefully as we go further and we take pictures from the actual port side, you actually can see uh, the difference from that end as well because that's, you could see the difference there as well. So when you're opening and you're porting, you want to take your time, not make sure you don't touch the seat. When it comes to narrowing the guides, again, I, I narrow the guide some, but I if you see that I want to keep as much material around the guide because again, this is not uh, a full race application. This is a street application. So I kept material on the guide, but I if they're not symmetrical. Uh, the one side of the port, because around the port is laid on an angle, I, I relieved it more than the other side. So it's not as symmetrical. Again, this is just a rough cut. And we'll finish it off with the rolls, sand rolls and stones later, and make the ports you know more or less what you typically typically see uh, this is just a, again a rough cut and this is what you should do first rough cut your heads and then go back and finish each port because after you rough cut it the actual finishing portion doesn't take as much time so all your time should be taken in actually cutting and shaping the port the way you want it. So the next step in the process, part three, is going to be doing the chambers. And I'll show you what, how I do it. And again, some people may differ in opinion, but again, this is my channel. This is how I, I do my chambers, and hopefully you guys enjoy that as well.